headline a bit more goa is the safest place for women followed by kerala mizoram sikkim and manipur while the hindi heartland bihar jharkhand uttar pradesh along with delhi are amongst the places most vulnerable these are the findings as part of a gender vulnerability index prepared by plan india this report is aimed at identifying challenges faced by women with respect to four parameters namely education health poverty and protection against violence we've been speaking uh, to people from across big cities getting reactions from women on what their biggest concerns are so let's play out some of those and then we'll get to the basics every city should be safe for women uh, whether it's capital or not but as far as we are seeing like reading newspapers every day con um, there are many rape cases i mean there's never a day when we don't hear cases like this plus parents are al always concerned about when we tra travel late at night as delhi is not quite safe for women do you think eve teasing is still prevalent yeah it is it is very much prevalent and we're forced to travel uh, in the ladies compartment I mean, we can we can't imagine ourselves traveling in general coaches because there'll be thousands of people just staring at you. Uh, I have friends in Delhi. I have friends in Mumbai. So basically, I'll tell you both the cases. Uh, in Mumbai, my friends, uh, they they say that when they like when they uh, go from Delhi, they feel much safer in other states, which is really sad. Milan is actually on the phone line. Milan, it's a known fact. There's barely been any difference on ground as far as uh, law and order and safety of women is concerned in Delhi. What are the people telling you? What are the big issues? That's right. Milan, are you there? Telling us. Okay, we have a bad audio line, Milan. Let's see if we can try and connect with you again. um uh, and uh, bring some more details but in fact while hearing a pil on women safety the delhi high court also expressed concerns today over the delay in implementing the safety precautions the high court directed the home and finance ministry to speed up the filling of uh, of vacant posts in delhi police it also raised questions about the lack of cctv so even on the day that uh, this report has come out that highlights how bihar uttar pradesh and delhi in that order are the most unsafe states uh, or territories for women here is the high court of delhi that has also asked questions about what happened to all of those plans for improving the security it's also told the home ministry to ensure that all the vacant posts in the delhi police are filled up very quickly in fact when shrija spoke with women in bengaluru because we've been getting you reports from all across the country women in bengaluru all echoed one sentiment of feeling unsafe in their own state issues when it comes to, and we are all i always believe women have all, always been vulnerable and also you know we've been thought that we are a weaker sex so whenever i go out you know i always fear that am i going to come back home safe especially if it's after a certain time like say after 8 in the evening i still feel so unsafe and i'm driving around i've been a victim of sexual uh, Uh, attention a lot of times and it's very disgusting when i go back home and tell my parents and the only thing they can say you know be strong I'm always worried of what i wear i can't wear something which is uh, it shows my cleavage or which is like short sleeves I, i wear a jacket i'm very conservative conservative why because these men made me like that what is happening it's a current freedom of expression being curbed uh, you take an example of north korea you take an example of india who we might think we have a lot of freedom here but when you're thinking from different sector it is actually getting controlled by a politician sector or politician as of such so those are the responses that we got from bengaluru but we spoke to people uh, in delhi we spoke to people in mumbai to women in gujarat in rajasthan and uttar pradesh and it's the same it's the same sentiment sure some of these states have performed better kerala uh, maharashtra is uh, ninth most safe kerala of course uh, goa and kerala are leading that and uh, clearly there are two things or two that uttar pradesh can learn from kerala when it comes to safety of women i believe we've got alima asif women activist in kerala uh, joining us on the phone line alima what would you want to tell these states who are lagging far far behind including our national capital uh, hello uh, 
I, I am here. I'm born and brought up here in Kerala, and like I feel like Kerala is comparatively safe when compared to any other state here. We can travel in uh, during daytime, nighttime. I work, and I like leave office after 8 p.m. And I feel I never feel, felt any problem as of now. And even we have like pink police who patrols on, on almost all public places, which includes like uh, bus stops, railway station, all all the. We we have event protection. We have toll free numbers which we can call at any time and we'll get help. So even our government is also doing many things to ensure our safety. So, uh, Alima, why why do you think it is that? Uh, what is it that's working? Uh, in terms of steps that have been taken by the government in Kerala, successive governments maybe, uh, and the police, because uh, surely Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, and Delhi need to learn some lessons here. Yeah, the 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 the, the, the major uh, or the newest thing is the pink police. We have the pink police on almost all the uh, public places where we the women will get help at any time, and we also have a toll free number which we can call any time and definitely within. Uh, a short time we'll get assistance so that is a very very good thing which women uh, like me uh, while traveling also we feel safe the education also plays a, a, a huge role do you think uh, and the fact that uh, you know as far as the literacy rate is concerned kerala also is far far ahead in that case and that matters a lot uh, when it comes to fighting these crimes alima Hello. Yes. Yes, I was asking you if you think that education and good education and a high literacy rate is also a factor uh, in curbing the, yeah, these yes. crimes uh, against women. Definitely, Kerala. In, when compared to Kerala, the other states, Kerala is having a very high literacy rate, especially among women. And also, we have a very uh, big number of women crowd working uh, in corporate sectors and also in government sectors. That can also be the reason, uh, and also all almost all the cases, women and jobs. Uh, when education, everything is open for women, so we can choose what we want. So that also contributes to the same. Thank you so much for speaking to us and telling us uh, what it is that uh, Kerala seems to be doing right at this point. Of course, it's not to say that there is absolutely no crime that takes place there, uh, but it's clearly doing uh, better than several of the other states. Goa and Kerala, like I said, in that vulnerability index, uh, are, are the most safe. Uh, we've, uh, we've also got... We've got Richa now who's joining us and I believe she's got some uh, 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 people with her, Richa. What's the sentiment in Mumbai? It is relatively safer, of course, than uh, some of the other uh, metros, especially a national capital. But what are people telling you here? That's right, Tanvi. I am at a workplace here in Mumbai with a group of women as well as men. Let's talk to them and know what exactly are their sentiments about the safety and security of women that they face on a regular basis, even in a city like Mumbai, which is considered to be extremely safe. Uh, Ma'am, you tell us, what do you feel about uh, safety and security of women? Maharashtra being ranked at ninth in this list. Mm -hmm. uh, not that good because at the top it's Goa, then Kerala. What do you have to say about what do you face on a regular basis? See, I feel quite safe here in Mumbai since I I have come from Bihar. So, if I have to compare Bihar and the situation in Mumbai, it's totally different. Hmm. In Bihar, if we go out, we find people, not, especially females, not going out of the houses after 6, 7 o'clock. Hmm. Here, we are actually free to move out of the house at any given point of time. Right. So, I feel Mumbai is a better place to live in and especially for females. Right. I do feel that. Right. Yeah. So, you are an employer yourself. You yourself have around 150 women working for you. What do they face on a regular basis and do they come up with any experiences of what they share? Yeah, I tell you, I get to meet a lot of people in Mumbai, when I interview them, I have majority of people coming from up countries, you know, majorly from various states, especially from north and uh, south, and especially from north. And when I ask them a question, you know, that throughout they have done their education in north and why do they want to move to Mumbai? So they, I get to listen to, you know, options from them or probably a reason behind their shifting over here. One, you have a lot of opportunities available in Mumbai, which is not there in major cities. Number two, they find Mumbai to be much more safer for women as compared to any other cities, you know. Mm. So majority of females who are from north, you know, especially from UP, BR, who have done high level of education. One, they do not see an opportunity over there. Second, from a safety front, they prefer working in Mumbai as compared to anywhere in North. 
Uh, ma'am, you tell us you uh, being in Mumbai. Do you feel safe traveling every single day? And have you had any experiences uh, once in a while? Because we do see instances and cases coming up, even the, in this considered to be one of the safest cities. Uh, comparatively, like uh, from different states, I think that Mumbai is quite safe. Uh, to travel around and places i have been born and brought up in mumbai itself so nowadays uh, i would say that there are many emergency numbers which have been come by issued by the government and the police as well wherein we can put some messages on or we can call whenever it is you know where, whenever we find that we are not safe and there are polices which will help you if you find yourself in trouble so at the moment i think that traveling in mumbai even at late night after 10 o'clock or we probably around it even at midnight it is safe enough so okay talking about yeah. local trains do you find that local trains have sufficient security for women because we have seen a few instances uh, in a recent past where women have faced cases of molestation uh yes at times uh, of course there are some cases but uh, most of the times you see a police inspector be it a male or a female who's always there uh from 11 or 10:30 onwards in a female compartment so yeah and if in, if we approach them they are uh, quite helpful so they are, it is safe enough to travel in uh, local trains at after 10 or as i said after 11 as well okay So as you just heard Tanvi Mumbai situation seems to be much better than the other places in general and they see there seems to be a unanimous voice here that states that they want uh, they they believe that Mumbai and Maharashtra is safer in the ranking although we have seen very many instances of in the recent past as well on railway stations or otherwise where women have been victims of such instances of molestation on, and other cases All right Richa thanks so much uh, for bringing us those uh, voices from Mumbai perhaps a lesson or two that can also be learned from Maharashtra uh, for Uttar Pradesh Bihar and Delhi that seem to be performing the worst in almost all of those uh, categories that we listed out we're going to take a short break we'll come back with more Okay, I believe uh, we've also got Advita Kala and Abha Singh on the phone line. But before I come to you, uh, just let's quickly go across to Milan and get some more details on what the Delhi High Court had to say about the state of affairs in the national capital, Milan. Definitely, Tanvi, we are looking at a situation where, uh, despite the horrific incident that happened on the 16th of December. Still, the police authorities are being pulled up by the Delhi High Court, where uh, they were supposed to install a network of CCTV cameras to make the city safe. And we are also looking at a gender vulnerability index, pointing to the fact that Delhi, the national capital of the country, ranks very low when it comes to safety of women, education, and health. And uh, while we know that the safety of women has to do with the higher level of education, and there has to be a change in mindset there, but uh, definitely. mechanisms on the ground uh, with the law and order situation is still not uh, better with lot of women on ground telling us that yes they experience eve teasing yes they have to face hardships even when they go to work whether it's women or college children and we know for a fact that delhi is uh, still known as the rape capital of india tanvi thank you for uh, bringing us that update as well uh, abha singh uh, coming across to you what do you think it is that uh, you know delhi Uttar Pradesh and Bihar uh, should learn when it comes from some of the other states as Goa and Kerala that clearly seems to be do, seem to be doing a lot better when it comes to women safety. Definitely, uh, it's uh, quite sad that the capital of the country, which should be uh, a mirror to the world, that how safe India is, is uh, one of the countries, one of the cities with the maximum number of crime against women. Uh, one of the reasons is that Delhi is uh, um, has borders with all the neighboring states, where it is seen that be it Haryana, be it Bihar, be it other states from where criminals come. Commit crime and go away. And in fact, these north states like Haryana and all have that misogynistic mindset where a crime against women is not taken very seriously, and that is why it is either not reported or due to shame it is not brought forward, which emboldens the criminal. And also, the corruption level is very high in Delhi and these states where more crime against women takes place because number one, women are scared to go to the police station to register a complaint, and even if they register, uh, they are um, they are humiliated. Embarrassing questions are asked, 
and the conviction rate to beat it all um, in rape cases conviction is just 28% molestation is barely 35% means majority of the criminals go scot free and that is the reason crime uh, against women in delhi up bihar is so bad with the priority i was saying because we see that even though now we have relatively tougher laws we still see that uh, like you pointed out it's very difficult for women to go to the police station and get some reaction and action from these cops in many cases these people are caught and then uh, they are out on bail by the next day exactly that is a major issue because uh, when the charges are put in the fir the police takes money or there is political pressure and they compromise the charge sheet they don't put the relevant fir uh, charges the ipc sections are such where bail is given immediately even though it would be a non bailable offence the police with due to either money or political pressure put bailable offences as a result a molester or a, um, a sexual abuser is out immediately um, it does not even stay in a jail for a day in fact uh, uh, the law needs to be amended that in cases of uh, sexual abuse bail should not be granted immediately because there are so many um, observations of supreme court which says that bail is a uh, right uh, so i think uh, changes need to be brought on that because the moment a person goes out there is no fear of the law and the me message goes that if you have money you can get away with rape you can get away with murder All right, I was saying thank you so much for joining us. This is the big story that we are tracking here. The vulnerability index that has come out has many telling stories, uh, be it the field of education, or health, or even safety of women. The Hindi heartland states and Delhi seem to be lagging in all of these. It's a wake-up call for the chief ministers of these states and the police department of these states. Uh, it's a topic we'll also take up uh, later this evening on the urban debate. For now, let's move on. Seven percent of Gujarat's population consists of Dalits, and even today, the marginalised community lives in fear. Mira now has been mapping every district and speaking to people across Gujarat from various backgrounds to catch you the pulse of the state before the elections in December. Today, we bring you a heartrending story from Delwada village in Una. Here, a single Dalit family of 14 members was ousted from two villages. Their son was burnt alive by an angry mob. The family now lives in fear. and isolation I'm in Delwada area right now in Una district and I am in a house of a Dalit family uh, which is the only family here in this particular area if we talk about uh, and the society here feels that Dalits are considered to be as untouchables Dalits are discriminated in a huge manner and here I am in in a house which has a family of 14 members you can see the condition of this house despite the government giving them this land nothing nothing facility has been provided to them you can see the entire house is only made with sand and stones because there was nothing that the government has done up till now for them just to be just to give a background of sorts of this entire family they have faced hardships and they have come here even today they face uh, abuses from the society stones are thrown at this particular house to them so that they can move from this particular area and go somewhere else what we understand even the kids were denied admission before in the schools and nobody is ready to be friends with the small kids here when we talk about the earning nothing the gram panchayat the village here is has abandoned this particular family what we also understand is that no electricity no water supply has been provided to this family nobody is allowed to come here and even to speak to the family members you can see this condition there are 14 members who stay in this house which is apparently made of only stones and bricks and sand and you can see the condition they have been writing to the government for some help and just before the elections we are talking here because dalit constitutes 7% of the state's population but nothing of sorts has been done up till now 
to at least make their living comfortable at least some basic facilities you can see the situation this is how in this one room at least seven members sleep in other rooms at least at least there are seven more other members nothing and what they are just demanding right now at this point in time is that government should come and look at the condition here the society is not ready to allow them to stay here the society is throwing stones at them there is no water supply there's no electricity they have they are staying in dark the entire night so here we are talking about 7% of the total population and those were the two big stories on the show for today thank you so much for joining us lots more news on the other side